Sisters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hey, I'm Fender Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by the inestimable Tom Campbell. Hello, Fenton. Twisted mind behind RuPaul's Drag Race. Twisted, I tell you. <laughs> and standing in for the irreplaceable Jane St. James this week. <laughs> Replacing the irreplaceable Jane St. James is... Blake Jacobs. Hi. Hi. Our millennial producer from behind the camera, behind the mic, mm -hmm. to, to center stage. All it's, about Eve, right? I know. Mm -hmm. A little bit. <laughs> so what we do here is we count down every week the top 10 things that make us go... Wow. wow. Therefore, without further ado... Let's start in at number 10. Number 10. This makes me go wow for lots of reasons. Wow, because it makes me feel old, but wow, because what a contribution. And that is, this is the this week is marks the 30th anniversary of Like a Prayer by I'm Madonna. Gonna, you, know, you know we could sit here at week after week and have... This is the 25th anniversary of... Oh. No, no, like Madonna has achieved so many things. She is, Thank you. It's, it's a never-ending milestone moment. Well, That's I'm gonna, what I'm saying. I'm going to make you feel real old. I used to have to ask my mom to watch the video on MTV. She always let me. And we used to listen <laughs> to this tape. Um, at nap time in kindergarten. A cassette tape. A cassette tape. Of but, the album Like a Prayer. Yeah. They put you down to sleep? Yeah, like sometimes we would listen to either Raggedy Ann and Andy <laughs> or Madonna's Like a Prayer tape. Oh my goodness. No wonder. It all makes sense <laughs> yeah. now. Madonna tweeted 30 years yeah. ago today, earlier this week, yeah. I released Like a Prayer and made a video that caused so much controversy because I kicks, kissed a black saint and danced in front of burning crosses. I also made a commercial with Pepsi that was banned because my video was seen as inappropriate Appropriate. Flame, flame, flame. Happy birthday to me and my controversy. And I don't know if you remember mm. the commercial. Obviously, the video, epic, amazing, br brunette, uh, you know, Madonna oh. she sees someone, sees a black man wrongly accused of murder. Yeah. Couldn't be more appropriate still today, sadly. It, absolutely, yes. But do you remember the Pepsi commercial? I do, yes, It I wasn't do. that. It was Madonna kind of, um, uh, what was it? It was her watching pictures of herself, supposedly, as a young girl. Mm -hmm. and like watching a younger version of herself. Yes. And it wasn't controversial at all, but they yanked that mother. And it was, I remember at the time, it was a record-making soda sponsorship deal. It was yes. a landmark deal. And no, it seemed like no sooner than it had been announced well, when Pepsi were tearing up the contract and issuing apologies left, right, and center. And foreshadowing, our, our trivia question is actually has something to do with this, but mm. um, it was actually the first commercial that the song... The song came out for a commercial oh. before it was released to radio or like anyone oh, had heard it before. That's, yeah. Oh, genius! A genius for, another for like a prayer. Genius. And yes. if you're of a certain age, you know about that period. But if you're, if you're younger, the Pepsi ad was the preeminent thing to get right. It was mm. Michael Jackson, Cindy. It was. It yeah. was. It was the Super Bowl of yes. uh, commercials. Peak right? pop culture. Mm -hmm. If you'd made the Pepsi ad, you were everything. And uh, and so yes. Well, and well that no, the other thing I was just going to say was that. Um, it wasn't just that it drew attention to racism, which it did, but it did so in a way that was also sizzling hot. Yes. Because, it, oh my God, it, it was, it, that's why I'm surprised that you could be put to sleep. A kindergarten <laughs> listening to it because well, it was. I suppose you weren't watching the video. It was right. just so hot. Yeah. It was really hot and beautiful. Like, and the whole yes. album is now. You know, when it came out, people what? said okay things, but it's. Let's look back to one what of Madonna's. Other tracks are on the, well, it's uh, Express Yourself. Oh. My God. Right? Come on, girls. Yeah. Do you believe in love? Because oh. I got something to say about no, it. There's a video. How about the MTV performance where she did it all in the suit with the monocle mm. and all that? Mm. Oh, Metropolis. <laughs> yes. That the, yeah, the video was Metropolis. Metropolis yeah. Prince uh, played guitar on that track yeah. and three others on the thing. So okay. it was like, there's Cherish. Cherish. I mm. love Cherish. Cherish. And yeah. you know who directed yeah. that video? Her Brits. Yes. That's the one with the mermen. Remember the mermaid? Yes. The mermen? Yes. It's such a sexy, it's, it's her with her she, her blonde hair and her dark eyebrows. So amazing. What um, else is Dear Jesse. Is mm, on it. Don't remember that. I didn't really know that one, but mm. dear Jesse, I, I knew sort of psychedelic and old oh father. father on that. Oh yeah, father, you I'll never mind. I live that way. way. Yes. <laughs> Why am I going away? Yeah. Keep it together, and of course, like a prayer. I mean, just amazing. Can I just this uh, for context, mm. and I'll move on. But um, these are the other number one albums of right. that year. Um, giving you the best that I got. Anita Baker, don't be cruel, Bobby Brown. Um, 
Electric Youth, Debbie Gibson. Uh. <laughs> Some things age better than others. The Raw and the Uncooked, Finding on Cannibals. Batman soundtrack, Prince. Mm -hmm. um, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation, 1814. That's a good That's a good moment. Mm -hmm. um, and, a, and not once, but three times, Girl, You Know It's True by Millie Vanilli reached the top of the charts. <laughs> <laughs> so just to give it a little historical context. But um, um, uh, it's an amazing video to go back and look to look at. It's an amazing album. And, and they talk about her vocal ease and... And it, it's like she's singing. She's like really performing. Yes. And, and when the gospel choir hits. Oh, when yeah. you call Goose, my name. Goosebumps. Well, and I heard that she, she credited Goosebumps. Sean Penn with helping her open up and write more personal. Aww. Yeah. Because they had just broken, you know, we're getting a divorce. Those kids need to get back together. I think they, they were great together. <laughs> anyway, happy anniversary. Mm. Take a little time to enjoy. I can't believe it's 30 years. Like I'm a so prayer. Sorry. I know. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> I know. Blake, number nine. Number nine. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about all the Kardashian family drama. We have stepped away from it up to this point. We have not dared touch it, but we haven't. Yeah. yeah. That's so, right. uh, let, just to get you caught up, Tristan Thompson, Chloe's baby, True's dad, you know, who plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers or whatever, which I believe is a basketball team. I think. Okay, good. I have no idea. Sports. <laughs> it's sports ball, but he lives in Cleveland. Yes, is what I know. Mm -hmm. um, he came and visited Kyle, Chloe and True for Valentine's Day. Valentine's and then Day. That weekend was at he threw a house party, like a private party, and Kylie's BFF Jordan was there. Yes, and they ended up hooking up. Making out and things, and it's it's supposedly it has separated Chloe and what's his name again? Tristan. Tristan. Friends of the Kardashians trash Jordan, of course. You know, um, Kylie was torn, but finally took Chloe's side and kicked Jordan out of her guest house because she was living in her guest house. And uh, Chloe, Chloe has been tweeting things, and at first she she blamed Jordan and said that because Jordan was on Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett That's Smith. That's right. What is Red Table Talk? That's Jada Pinkett Smith's Facebook oh. show where she lets it all hang out. I'm right. sorry, I'm listening. And the, the Smiths are the ones who introduced Jordan to Chloe in the first place. Okay. So that's the reason Jordan wanted to go there because she thought that – she thinks that uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is one of the most uh, – what does she say? She calls her the most non-judgmental people she knows. Jordan said that. Jordan said that about okay. Jada Pinkett Smith. And so she went on there and told her version. She said uh, that Jordan admits she wouldn't have gone to Tristan's house party where the alleged cheating went down, but denies making out with him. Her version of the story is that she did sit next to him and drape her legs over him while he, he was sitting on the chair. She describes it as innocent fun. As for the kiss, she says they only lip, the only lip-to-lip -lip contact came as she was leaving. Just giving him a kiss. And all the party goers said that, of course, wasn't true. And Chloe tweeted, why are you lying, Jordan? But then the next day came out and said that it's actually Tristan's fault. She should have known it from the beginning because he has cheated on her before. That's what I think. I think there's a yeah. long history. Um, you know, it's funny because you think of like the Kardashians, who I kind of love, as publicity machines and how much of it's real and how much of it's fake. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I feel like it's real. What do I know? Yeah. And I feel like she did like on Friday night or whatever, she did fire off Chloe, that email, you know, that, that tweet is just sort of trashing the girl when it really is an issue. It between takes two her. to tango. Yeah. It takes two to make a thing go right. Michelle <laughs> it Sage. does. It is. You touch on where I, I just sort of feel everything happens now for sort of fodder for the show. I suppose I have a hard time engaging as a human being. Yes. In that. This doesn't sound like, I mean, I could be, is this is this serious well, Kardashian drama or is it just sort of? Well, he no, it's serious Kardashian. Uh, Kylie and this girl are like were super were super close, oh, and I even see. Chloe said in one of her tweets that it's it just sucks like someone that you treated as a little sister oh. would do this to you. She she actually Chloe has a good American clothes clothing yes, brand. Jeans is love my Facebook page. And Jordan was one of the models. She had her own like page yes. on the page and. Mm -hmm. She's it's no messy. longer there. Yeah, I love Khloe Kardashian. She's maybe my favorite Kardashian. Mine too. And we've had her on the world, you know, drag race a couple of times. And please come back. But I question, you know, the heart does what the heart wants, what the heart wants. But I question her judgment in men. Uh, maybe she should yeah. come to us and let us hang with us. <laughs> Not as a as a partner, Chloe. We don't want to bring you down that much. Well, there is good news. Um, Kylie actually accused Travis of cheating this week too, but that's all been blown over apparently. And Black China and Rob are working things out in mediation. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. That would be a happy reunion. 
it's a um, this is too complicated a uh, thing to introduce, but I am going to, which is like, do they pick bad men? Is it impossible when you're that rich and that famous to find a man who will toe the line? Or if you go after a ball player, are you saying I want someone who's going to cheat on me? You know what I mean? Uh, Isn't all it, those questions and more? Maybe they need maybe they need less famous men, right? Who who women aren't throwing themselves? At. I don't think that's going to work because I think when you're famous and you, you need go another, with someone less famous, I think that's also fault lines and inevitable. Sadness totally. will result. Well, okay, you can watch the uh, watch it all play out on season sixteen of Keeping right. Up with the We're Season three months 16. away from. Do you know it was thirty years ago today? <laughs> 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 on the fourteenth anniversary of Like a Prayer, the Kardashians started. Yeah. I am going to move on if that's okay. Please. So number eight. Number eight. Leaving Neverland. <sighs> My goodness me, it was, I mean, again, about, what, 1993-94, the police first raided Michael Jackson's Neverland, searching because of accusations of child abuse. Now, this is a four-hour documentary yeah. made by Dan Reed, made by Channel 4 and HBO, yep. and it unpacks in incredibly explicit detail not explicit for the sake of what's the word? Uh, what is that word? It's not exploitative. It's not. It's it's the detail. It, you need this level of detail. It's sort of forensic, of, not to be silly. It, thank you. Yes. It's granular. It 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 sort of. You need this kind of real estate to really unpack what went on and to really, the sheer detail makes you realize. How true it is. It's basically the testimony of two people. Jimmy Safechuck, who was in the Pepsi commercial. Right, yeah. The Michael Jackson Pepsi commercial. And Wade Robson, who was discovered in Australia, I believe. Yes. Uh, an amazing little kid dancer. Worked with Britney and Big Sink. Britney yeah. connection. And these two kids. Broke up Britney and Justin. Actually, when up in 2004, when because here, look, here's the thing. In 1993, the Michael Jackson child abuse thing blew up with Geordie Chandler. Then Geordie Chandler settled out of court. They, they settled... Uh, I think Michael Jackson paid something like 20 or $25 million, not pleading guilty or, right. or anything to make the whole case go away. Everything went quiet. Then 2004, it all blew up again with another accusation. And on this occasion, it went to trial and Wade and Jimmy went to court, testified, Michael never laid a finger on me, which makes <sighs> this so astonishing that they're here to tell you, actually, from the age seven on, they were abused by Michael, which has, of course, created a huge Ferrari. Uh, Oprah had to do a special. Yes. You know, they had to call Oprah in for an after show. <laughs> right, you know it's big when they call Oprah Who's in. Been getting... When the Kardashians call Oprah in, then you know it's reached certain level yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the, uh, the, the, it's like, what's this documentary? Glued. Uh, and I felt so badly for them because what I feel comes out is the real nuance of, of how – how long it took them to process that what had happened to them was abuse and how yeah. they really felt close to Michael. And it's very easy for people outside the bubble to point the finger and say, oh, you know, they should have known, the parents should have known. Right. Being, but this was the world's most famous pop star. He was telling these kids how wonderful they were. It's like, I would have... I, I I would have done it, you know, if, if I was in their position. And I'm trying to. I'm saying this because I, I just don't. Well, feel you that let they... Nolan watch Sausage Party too. Oh, he did. That was, no, that <laughs> was, was my, different. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was. I mean, it's two parts. It's four yes. hours. You get an HBO. Yeah. Yep. I wasn't going to watch it because it just feels like bad news. Yeah. I had a lot of judgment going in before seeing it with the parents. Like, how could the parents? Mm. And I have to tell you, the way it's not an apology for the parents because no. the parents. It makes me want to cry. But the parents are like separated largely yep. from the kids now. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, there's some communication. But it, mm -hmm. it's a damage, and the parents did not know, and they were could have sucked in and seduced with it as they well. They were sucked in and seduced, and it's this, this master, this sort of yeah. Uh, but here's what really what I did get really incensed actually, because I came away from it feeling everybody, not, and I uh, not at the documentary, but actually people's reaction to the documentary was sort of how could we not have known? Now we finally see with clarity. And we don't see with clarity. Worse things are happening every day right in front of our eyes and we're engaged in mass denial. And it's the same kind of, it's the exact same denial that allowed Michael Jackson to get away with it for so long. Right. Because the truth was out there in 1994, 95, 96, when the Jody Chandler case happened, no one wanted to believe it. Victor Gutierrez wrote this book that no one would publish. Right. And you read the book 
and the detail, the, the, the similarities, the parallels between what's in that book and what these two boys talk about is there. It's and, identical. And well, in the, their e- stories. The, even their two stories in the yeah. documentary are, are the identical. same story, yes. the, separated by several years. Yeah. yeah. There's a pattern and it's, there's a it, behavior. And I still feel bad for Michael Jackson, not as the most, but just like, like, like a sick person yes, left absolutely. unchecked. And then his victims... Your heart goes out to them and their families and the long lasting. I actually think everybody's looking around for someone to blame. And now it's, you know, let's blame Michael Jackson. And people are asking, will we even like his music anymore? I think that would be a terrible shame because I think what's to blame here. And I think it destroyed him as much as it led to what he did and how he destroyed the lives of those boys and how those families were destroyed. It's the American dream. And the American dream is a great thing. But you've got to know it's a dream. It is not reality. And we are so enslaved to this delusion. I mean, look, (laughs) Michael Jackson, okay. We have a a similar problem right now with a celebrity in our lives who is a predator, who is a criminal, who is a fraud, who is also probably a traitor. And actually, funny enough, was famous at the same time as Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a musician. This dude was the real estate guy Uh and he was the king of business. Donald Trump. I mean, yeah, the, the, the power sim- of denial is strong mm. and we like to project onto people Yeah, because the Michael Jackson thing, I don't feel like it's not a surprise to me, Nope. but we, it was not, he, he outwitted the, the juries and things and the Jacksons mm. are in an uproar saying that uh, they, they, that they're ruining the estate. I mean, they have a, a financial right. stake and their brother, right. but they, they say it's not something you weren't in the closet with the kid. Like you, there's right. no one who can really, you know, speak to it other than the victims yes. and Michael and Michael's yes. gone. Oh, well, Corey Feldman, bless him, said the most ridiculous thing. Oh. He said, you know, well, it's fine that these two people are getting their voices heard, but all the other kids who weren't molested, their voice should be heard yeah. too. Mm, I don't know. I mean, if someone murders someone, you don't say, well, they didn't murder everybody else. <laughs> right. so they didn't murder. <laughs> Let's hear from them. It's unfortunate. I would recommend people watch it, and I'm I don't Absolutely. have my stomach for crime and all that stuff is really uh, I, get, I I'm scared of it, but it's it's presented in a really compelling way. And I also thought like four hours that's too much, but it really it really told the tale in a really yeah. touching way. And yeah, especially the sort of delayed release by which they realize, <sighs> oh shit, that was abuse. That wasn't. That wasn't the love affair I thought it You're was. You're in your 20s, or it was a love affair yeah. and it was abuse. You know, and it's, it's, exactly. It's yes. the end in life that makes things so complicated. Exactly. And I still feel, in spite of this four hour documentary, which I feel presents the end very well, I feel the public reaction to it isn't getting it. It's the same sort of varying from one extreme, oh, let's deny this is happening, Michael right. Jackson's mother, to another extreme, oh, Michael Jackson's an evil person. Look, we did this to ourselves. By our gullibility, our enslavement to the American dream that would lead us to deny the facts that are staring right in front of us, even to this day, right now, with Donald Trump. So, yeah. etc. cetera. Uh, Leaving Neverland is streaming on HBO Go, HBO Now. Get caught up on this season of Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles, on the Bravo app, and tune in Thursdays at 9 p.m. on Bravo. We'll be right back. Hey, we've got a question before we take our quick break. Yes, I I do. Like Our Prayer, like I said, was the first song by a major artist to be used in a commercial before being released to stores or radio stations Mm. for Pepsi. It Mm. premiered on March 2nd during what hit TV show? Mm. I think I know what it is. I think I know, too. I think I know. I think I know. We'll be right back after the break with the answer. This is the Wow Report on Radio Andy's Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report, our countdown of the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. Did you wow, Blake? I, I forgot. I was, <laughs> <laughs> you're not used to sitting here. Blake is normally our, yeah, behind uh, the camera. That third part harmony was missing. <laughs> but, uh, our James St. James is missing. Yes. Yes. He, he can't be here this week, but but you are. Mm-hmm. I am. Yes. Hello. And I asked a trivia question. You did. Why did you? Yes. I said, Like a Prayer was the first song by a major artist to be used in a commercial before being released to stores or radio stations. It premiered, it was for Pepsi, and it premiered on March 2nd during what hit TV show? Well, you see, I was going to say the Super Bowl, but because that can't be right, because it's March 2nd. I believe March 2nd was a Thursday, and I believe it was during the Cosby show. <sighs> that would be correct. America's oh number one God. show. Speaking it of was. controversial figures. Yeah. 
Oh, what a no difference right. 30 years make. Just want to have a long pause. Makes Madonna seem pretty tame, right? 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill Cosby. Right. <laughs> and it also speaks to how people just get distracted at the least, at, at the silliest things. Like, yeah. controversy? What controversy? Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> number seven, Tom. Number seven. Well, big news in daytime. Wendy Williams is back on the air. Right. And it's been, I'm not a big Wendy Williams watcher just because of the time of day, and I don't want to <laughs> clutter up my DVR with that. But she is a force to be reckoned with, and she has been in the public eye. She had that falling incident at Halloween. That um, Naomi Smalls. Yes, Didn't she do? Re recreated yeah. on Drag Race. And, you know, it's been re revealed that she has Graves' disease, and that was the official reason that she took two months off in the peak of, of the season. Are but you it's, saying it's something more? Well, we also know, uh, without detail from her, but we know that she and her husband are probably having a tough time. There's been rumored that he's having an affair, things of that nature. She came back on the air uh, with, uh, with head-breaking news, mostly that her hair's short now. It's kind of a bob. <laughs> it looks really good. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a good thing. It's like whoever, you know. But she is famous for wigs. She is famous for wigs, but she's but usually it's a long wig. And this yeah, is yeah, a short yeah. bob. But, you know, she introduced herself. It's very A Star is Born. Where she, my name is Mr. Miss Esther Blodgett. It's like my name is Wendy Hunter. She used her <laughs> husband's last name. Oh, Ooh, yes. Julie Chin, Chin Mumba. Yes, thank you. That's good. That's good. Um, they've been married for 25 years. She said, how are you doing? It made everybody laugh. Um, and, uh, you know, she showed lots of old pictures of her and her husband. I guess she, I, I forgot about this, but she was kind of plus sized for a while when she first met him. Mm. So they've been through thick and thin, literally and, and figuratively, um, and just wanted to remind who she fell in love with, who he fell in love with. So they're back together. I mean, it's good. It's um, happy ending. He's accused of cheating. Is somebody pregnant? She didn't really clean anything up. Mm. She did kind of a don't ask, don't tell kind of right. thing. Right. Which is a little bit ironic from the queen of gossip, Exactly. Right? That's what I was going to say. That's the only thing that gets on my... I kind of like her, and but but if you're going to dish it, you have to be able to take it, too. Yes. Mm. And she just wasn't going to go there. Right. So she, you know, and... Uh, it's like, please respect our privacy, but it's like, do you ever respect anybody else's privacy? Because whole thing is to stir shit. But isn't this a brilliant strategy in terms of keeping people <laughs> engaged and curious and wanting to know? <laughs> you know, you're right. <laughs> Come sweeps, maybe. She'll have a little... To have the husband on for a little bit of therapy. But, you know, I'm glad she's well. You know, we work right. as about her health. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy Williams is... Oh, she also had like a shoulder fracture or something. Well, and she said she was on pain pills and that's why she was slurring her speech. Yeah, that, uh, that's what happened too. There right. was some slurring. I just have to say that dressed as the Statue of Liberty and falling over like that was just iconic moments. Yes. I mean, you couldn't have worn a better outfit. <laughs> you love the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> well, I do, but it's just, it's just, it just makes well, it. Yeah. It's not just fainting. It's like fainting plus. Right. It's like, it was Halloween. Right. And she was wearing her Statue of Liberty out, her costume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wear um, mine usually just on the weekends. Um, <laughs> it's a kitty cat. But, you know, Wendy Williams or Wendy Hunter, Mrs. Hunter. Right, welcome back. You know, feel better and maybe you'll feel more comfortable spilling a little more of your own tea. Right. As we move forward. All right, well, number six, someone who won't be back. Number six. Yeah. Unfortunately. Oh, was that a was that a little bit of a tacky segue? <laughs> I suppose it was. Or was it funny or tacky? It just depends on your I, mood. I, I just I, I'm sorry. I just say you it. Know. Rest in power, Luke Perry. Luke um, Perry, who everyone remembers as Dylan McKay on Beverly Hills 90210. I do too. I love. I I've seen every name. episode. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I loved that show. Although I was a late bloomer, but I remember him from. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie. The movie, the original, the OG. Yes, from 1992 with Christy Swanson, yep. who I loved at the time, but kind of despise now because I think she's a gross Trump supporter. But, you know. But he was in that in 1992, and that preceded the 1997 you know, TV show yeah. that everyone... Changed the world. Yeah. Changed the fucking world. And, but Joss Whedon did... Both. Did both, yeah. Yeah. He died in on last week. Uh, he had a massive stroke somehow. And wasn't he, on, if, uh, strangely enough, or ironically, well, he, wasn't he on his way to a memorial service? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't. I don't mm -hmm. know that, but I do know it was on the same day that the reboot for 902 and O was announced. Like you got the news that 902 and O was right. coming, coming back, back. But then you got a, the news that on Luke Fox Perry had a, a summer stroke. series. Our dear friend Tori. 
Mm-hmm. Employed in, again in it. Yeah, she's in it. Yeah. it. Most of the cast is except, and Luke was not because Luke is part of Riverdale, which is a huge uh, phenomenon right. here on CW. Yeah. Plays Archie's father, right. married to Molly Ringwall in the uh, on the series. That's Archie's right. mother. So it, you know, Riverside has a lot of cultural impact right Riverdale. now. Riverdale. Did I say Riverside? But Riverside too. Yeah. Riverside. Uh, that's over in the valley. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> it crosses Lancashire. Sorry, River, Riverdale. And so it's it's sad because he was coming back. There was such another, definitely another chapter. In his life mm. um and 90210 i was a little old for it but it is a it's a phenomenon i remember when we did um candle nicole and nicole ritchie it's like oh she, yeah she couldn't wait to do 90210 stuff it was really important she's a few it's, years older than me and, the, and 90210 was a little bit old for me yeah. but but i still i watched it all in college and i still go back and just if I don't have yeah. anything to watch, I'll watch it. And he was the sex symbol for like a good five and years. And he also did uh, Eight Seconds where he played this bull rider, yes. Lane. Yes. So he was hot. And he kind of brought back in the 90s the long sideburn. Yeah. And that was Who his was deal. The other guy on 902. Jason Priestley. Jason oh, Priestley. Right. Was he more, I was more always, flavor? Mm. I was always a Jason Priestley girl. I like the, the and then there was the other guy that was the, the DJ Ian guy. Ian Ziering. No. Oh, Brian Austin Green. Brian Austin Green. He was my. They were all cute. They were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were all cute. Yeah. All Steve right. could have gotten it too. Such. Oh my Luke gosh. Perry passed away. Rest in power. Los Angeles. Monday, March fourth, after suffering a massive stroke. He's yeah. just fifty-two. I know that's young. so sad. Number five. Well, this made me go, I don't know what's happening, but all my picks these have something in common. See if you, <laughs> number five, Lorena. Lorena Bobbitt. It's a four hour documentary. <laughs> oh, how do you find time? Streaming on Amazon. I have to tell you, this is pretty addictive. I mean, it's got a great, it's a great hook for a story, right? In 1992 slash 93, Lorena Bobbitt cut off her mm-hmm. husband's penis. 92 slash 93. All right, a cut above the rest. <laughs> Slice of life. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting in there a bit much. She took off, she left the condo or the apartment in the car driving, I love this detail, gripping it, and then somewhere along the way just decided to throw it out the window. In a field. In a field of grass. It's organic. With the, with the knife. With the knife and opposite a 7-Eleven. And the 7-Eleven is significant because... Well, first of all, let me say that the first 20 minutes of the documentary are all about the hunt for the penis. You know? And it, it's <laughs> frankly... my life. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's good. That was a nice. I'm glad my parents are allowed to hear the show. And it was. I tell you. I mean, obviously, it's it's. This is the subject, not without inherent amount of humor, dark humor, perhaps. Yeah. You have to, and, otherwise, it's so and gruesome. All the characters in the documentary, they don't quite know what to call it. They call it the appendage. They they call it his something extra. That it, it's just this sort of the coyness around this, and it isn't until about 15 minutes in that they say the word penis. Ding 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 ding. Fortunately, the word of the day comes. Yeah. Yeah, right. And and it is fabulous the way they found it in a field. The one of the detectives wouldn't pick it up. He'd only like point to it. And then they picked it up and I think the detail oh that's it. They put it on ice in a hot dog bag of all things because thank goodness there was a 7-Eleven across the street and they oh were able God. to do that. Um and I, I suppose then, you know, I suppose in a way this is trying to be a sort of comedy version of OJ made in America. Right. You know, I, mean, I don't think it really quite succeeds on all these levels, but it does then go on to talk about how really this was a coming of age moment. Well, it, one, it was a cultural moment for the P word, the penis word to get, mm-hmm. because yeah. that's when people did start talking about penises more. But two, it was a cultural moment of a sort of me too. You had Anita Hill, you had tail hook. You had a whole the OJ. burgeoning awareness of, of sexual abuse. The Kennedy rape was another right. huge story. And, um, of course, spousal abuse. And well, there were two trials. Remember, there were two trials. The first trial was John Wayne Bobbitt on trial for sexual assault. Uh-huh. He was acquitted. It was and cut then, and dry. <laughs> oh, good God. And then in the second hour, her trial, which was she was on trial for malicious injury, um, which actually was delayed because it was supposed to start around Christmas. And because they were allowing cameras in the courtroom for the first time in this trial, right. 
they were like, no, you can't have it at Christmas. No one will watch. So they pushed the trial till after the New Year. Wow. Well, can you yeah. imagine everyone sitting at home at Christmas watching the trial? I can. Come on, family. Mm. Put the gifts down. <laughs> Let's watch court TV. Well, you and who produced this? Ah, it's directed by Joshua Rofe. Rofe. But I thought it was brought to us by Jordan Peele. Oh, Jordan Peele is the executive producer, oh. and it's uh, currently streaming on Amazon. I mean, it's interesting, Tom. We were talking earlier about documentaries and, and the way that these sort of four-hour miniseries, they have a certain rhythm. And it's, you know, you, you, have, you have the interview, and you have multiple camera angles on the interview yes, subject. Up, down, up, 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 over. Up, up, up. And then you have archive, which is, you know, great. But then you have a drone shot. We and are in the age the drone, of the drone shot are. doc. Drone docs. I tell you, everything looks better with a drone. Yes. You know, a suburban street looks great. You get this sort of, and it just imbues everything with a sinisterness. It gives it a, a true crime. Leaving Neverland every time. Yes. Yeah. From a Leaving distance, by you drone. look like my yeah. enemy. And then you, you combine that with an ominous score. Yes. And for a final touch, you have full Full screen date cards, 1992, yes. October. You know, and and it just, I tell you, the thing seems to make itself. It's, it's. I mean, we it's should very repackage good. some series. I don't know what with some trivial, lightweight material and just put in ominous music yes. and drone shots. Drone shots. Well, that, I bet that's <laughs> kind of like Netflix's American Vandal. Remember they did the yes, the fake like the, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, that's Lorena. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. Is there anything? Is there any revelations? Not really. It's really just a good. I mean, I suppose that because it's four hours, there's a lot more opportunity to go into the details yeah. about how shell shocked she was, how she was a victim of abuse, how it. I, I just think it's great with these long documentaries that you, the audience, really get to look into the eyes of yes. the subjects. And it's not so much what they say, it's your ability to your truth spend meter time listening with them. To them. Exactly. And I, I wouldn't say that they're badly made, it's or necessarily brilliantly made. It's just a whole new dynamic that you get to have uninterrupted time yeah. with a subject. And so that nuance and complexity that everybody has is what you what you get. Feeling of knowledge yeah. and intimacy. Yeah. It, it, are they still in touch in any way? Well, I'm I haven't got to the end of our okay, four yet. Fine. And it's interesting. I mean, I was sort of wondering if it is going to, as it were, sustain because, you know, it's it's ultimately I think the crime is a great hook, as it were, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just not I'm not sure if I'll get to the end, you know. Okay. Um, All mm -hmm. right. So it made you go, what? But not with well, the wood. Well, well, <laughs> it made me go, ow. <laughs> Just the first oh. W in there. This segment oh. was brought to you by Ginsu Knives. And I have to say, yes, you're very excited. You. you do get to see it. You get to see it, the 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 penis in a cutoff state. And I have to say, it does look rather small. You know, I don't. But, I don't want that pressure. Well, maybe I don't want he's to think a about grower. My, my severed. Yeah. yeah, it was cold that night. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> yeah. There's no blood in it. Come on. I have another trivia question. I hope it's about okay. penises. Well, it's actually about this. Oh. What hit? 1990 movie, sorry, what hit 1999 movie indirectly, though not by name, mentions Lorena Bobbitt. The lead character says, it could be worse. A woman could cut your penis off while you're sleeping and toss it out the window of a moving car. Mm. 1990. Nine. 1999. All right. I got an idea. Okay. We better take a commercial break so I can think about that. We will. And in the meantime, tune into the new Eleven dairy season. Isn't that clever? Eleven no, no. dairy. Eleven dairy season of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Every Thursday. It is good. It is good. BH1 on, also on WoW Presents. And Untucked is Plus. back. Yeah, and if you don't have WoW Presents Plus, you can sign up for that at wow-presents.com. Wow mm -hmm. You get one wow. month for the price of just one latte. latte. Maybe even less. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Fenton. Uh, I'm here with Tom and Blake sitting in for James. Uh -huh. I miss you, James. You do. We've been counting down top 10 things that make us go, wow. wow. Ow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, speaking of Al, Blake, what was our question? What hit 19... Well, we spoke of Lorena Baba we before did. the break. and Who what cut off her husband's penis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what hit 1999 movie indirectly, <laughs> though not by name, mentions Lorena Bobbitt. The main character says, it could be worse. A woman could cut off your penis while sleeping and toss it out the window of a moving car. I think it's Fatal Attraction. 
Nine eighty nine. I think it's too late for that. Um, I'm gonna say Wayne's World, the sequel. That's ninety two or four. How dare oh you? It was uh, Fight Club. Tyler Durden, uh, um, Brad Pitt says it. Fight yeah. Club. I'd That's on my queue for the next David movie Fincher. I want to see. I've never seen it. I know. Oh. It's, I know. I know. You should see it. I know. It was a you hit film spoiler, from 1999. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's carry on with our countdown of the top 10 things that made us go, wow, number four. Number four. Well, have you ever had that feeling like in a dream where the test is tomorrow, but you don't have, you don't know what it's about? You never had that, that recurring yeah, dream? Show. Yeah, because <laughs> I have a dream that I'm living. I'm, I think I'm asleep right now because I have a feeling I'm supposed to have something to talk about oh. in this segment, and I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about very briefly something I've yet to try, but I want to because, uh, you know, Ariana Kai Grande. Bella. Kai Bella would be good. <laughs> Ariana Grande is now has her own limited drink at Starbucks. Are you familiar with this? No, I had no idea. Is this kind of like when Gaga had her drink? I guess so, yes. And, um, you know, I, I launched, I think, earlier this week, right? It did. And I'm, I'm going to go down the street and get one. <laughs> so you have to go. Okay. So what can you, can what? you buy her? Is it? Tell can you us buy? about it. Uh, you know, I, I had a page about it, but I, I can't find it. <laughs> so we might have to I, well, edit down some of this. Let me help you out uh, here. Please. Because, uh, my son, Nolan, this morning, I took him to school. And on the way to school, driving along, he said, Dad, can we go to Starbucks? And I'm like, why on earth? Like, <laughs> we just had breakfast at home. Like, no. But then he said, Ariana Grande <gasps> is launching a new drink. And, and I you were like, like can I get him on the phone? <laughs> so we went to, there's a Starbucks right near his school. So I went and parked and Nolan was like, shall I get a tall or a grande? I said, you better get a grande. <laughs> a grande, grande. Now Nolan, of course, has grown up watching Ariana Grande before she was Ariana Grande, when she was on Cat Sam and Cat, yeah, Cat and Sa Sam, Sam and Cat, Cat whatever. And see, I, had no, I, I can never be young hey, enough. Did you ever see that show? Well, actually, no. Sam and Cat was a spinoff of oh, was it another show on that she was on? Yeah, right? was it? Was it? Was because she was Cat, right? From one show, and Sam was from uh, I I Carly. Oh, okay. And then they came and then together. They moved in together. Yeah. And uh, uh, Ariana Grande on that show was she had a red really hair, red hair, and a weird. She she was not the Ariana Grande that, that we, we know. know. Yeah, not the Ariana Grande who's launched a Starbucks drink. Not Tom's yes. Ariana. No, and you know she had, last week she had three number one songs and the number one album. I did. And a Starbucks drink. Yes. I mean, come on, a what cloud is it? inspired Starbucks soft drink? The new cloud macchiato is a macchiato, but also a cloud. What is, what is that? Can you <laughs> unpack the cloud? Um, I, I mean, um, it comes in cinnamon or caramel, hot or cold. Um, and the cloud component comes from the Starbucks trademarked cold foam, which was introduced in 2014. But it comes from Grande's Twitter account, which has more than 62 million followers from where she tweeted the cloud emoji 98 times in 2018. Do you think if I tweeted that much, they'd make a coffee <laughs> after me? So well, wait, wait, wait. She, she used the cloud emoji for what? Just because. Uh, yeah, I oh, guess. I see, I see, I see. I think there was a missed opportunity because her last album was called Sweetener. Oh. <laughs> like, wouldn't that have made more sense? To... Yeah. What do you think the deal is? I and mean, what do you think she gets out of it? Uh, Free we're, coffee. We're talking to her. <laughs> There's a picture of her that she, she, oh, she look, tweeted. Oh, she's enjoying one. And she's enjoying it. Her name's on it. And she's got a dog and some friends and a, a barista. The, what is the foam? Cloud. Like a, it, <laughs> I did read that she did just uh, pass Selena Gomez as the most followed woman <laughs> on Instagram. But they're both still under... Christian Ronaldo, you know the soccer player, right? Mm. You know, I think the sort of ball. follow him right now. Things got, there's a there's an ice cream place in Larchmont, um, Salt and Straw, yeah, and uh, they did a, a, a an ice cream flavor called Ghost, and it looked like frozen gray fog, and it tasted. Disgusting! It was like it was like eating mud, <laughs> like bad memories and carbon. <laughs> yes, it was like if you could do an exorcism in an ice cream pint, that was what it was. So I hope this is more delicious. Well, I, of course, no. it's Starbucks. It has no, to be. No, no. But uh, underneath it all, just so you know, is this partnership with Starbucks and mm. Ariana Grande is mm. is, uh, is related to International Women's Day. 
And oh. Ariana will be featured on a Spotify playlist inspired by feminism. Because when I think Ariana Grande, I think feminism. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Grande Coffee. I think of clouds. Um, um, you know, but I God, mean, she's pretty feminist with the is, seven she rings. Is. Yeah. She is. She is. I don't know what I mean. diamond rings for six of my bitches. Yes. Mm. God mm. is a woman. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, wait, there must be some information about Well, thanks for having uh, me on the show, and I give you that important <laughs> update on something I barely know about Ariana Grande coffee. Mm. You can get Available. a Grande, Ariana Grande cloud. Yeah. Mm. Anywhere. Coffee at, Anywhere. At Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere, because Starbucks are everywhere. Mm hmm. Blake, number three. Number three. I wanted to talk a little bit about, a little bit more about TV <laughs> reboots. Are we over them or not? Well, you know, we've I, had the Will and me, Grace. Yes, and the, the, the cynical me says that they're so hard to get attention to anything in the quieter world that having a title that people know already helps. helps. So I think just by the sheer uh, marketing of it, I think we'll continue to have them. There's so many coming up. We talked about the 90210 six episode event series on Fox this summer. It could be good. I th- I'm excited it's about be big, isn't it? I'm excited about that one. I'm also excited about The Hills New Beginnings. Yes, on MTV. Right. Um, there's actually a modern remake from Blackish's Kenya Barris and Yamara Table Taylor of Bewitched. An African American Bewitched. Is it's, she still doing Gronish? It, it's a it's a pilot commitment order at ABC right now. So it's not like definitely happening, but I love Bewitched. It's such an old fashioned sitcom. It's you know, it's just in the name, but another thing we talked about on this show, The Boss Baby. Did you know that it is now a oh, Netflix series? The no, Boss no. Baby movie with Alec Baldwin right, is, is now, now a th- Netflix series. Oh, good God. Um <laughs> King of the Hill, speaking of animated, yes. I love King of the Hill. It's a good one. And uh Fox boss Dana Walden met with Mike Judge and Greg Daniels about possibly bringing that back. I'm really excited. Wow. Um, the Munsters may be having a comeback. I could see the Munsters coming Didn't back. Didn't they come back earlier, like in the 90s? And they tried. The Facts of Life. I worked on The Facts of Life. Well, Jessica Biel and Leonardo com- Leonardo DiCaprio's production company <laughs> are act- actually working on that. I yeah. thought Leonardo DiCaprio was going to play Mrs. Garrett. I just get my little footnote. <laughs> Summer of 84, uh, still in school, had to get a job, was the sixth assistant in like a six uh, casting director office, worked uh, cast extras with The Facts of Life and The Jeffersons. Was it when The Facts of Life was like 18 girls for season one or was it when it was it just was the four? It was season seven. It was just the four. Okay. And it was the George Clooney season. Ooh. So Ooh. I work with George Clooney. Can't you tell That's by looking hot. at me? And and I also met Patty Duke, whose son Sean Aston. Sean Aston was also on the Facts of Life. Awesome. So that, you know, it's it's an old dull story now, but I tell you, it was very exciting then. Very I exciting loved, to hang I out loved with Patty Joe Duke. and Blair both like equally. Uh, just a couple more that I'm excited okay. about: Designing Women with Linda Bloodworth Thompson. That's good. Is in yeah. development. I would I would want we need to spend more time casting these off off the show because that would be a fun one to figure out who should be in it. Mm-hmm. And then we talked um about Jordan Pill earlier. He actually has the Twilight Zone oh, coming yes. to CBS All Access in April. So So I'll never see it because it's on <laughs> CBS Access. Well, I, I will refuse to buy another service. Oh, really? You do? Oh, do you have it? Yeah, I do. Because uh, Star Trek. They have Star Trek on it. Yeah, yeah. I know I I bought it, signed up for it, never watched it. I know. Yeah, that's well, and they like also have 90210 reruns on there. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to number two. Please do. Number two. Another screen, another documentary, not a four hour documentary. It's called Divide and Conquer. What's it about? It is on Amazon. It is about the architect of Fox News. Roger Ailes. Roger yeah. Ailes. Who was, exactly. I mean, you really do have to have the stomach for it because this is a disgusting story about a disgusting man who, thank God, is dead. Um, <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> one dong. of my favorite shows growing up after school, mm. the Mike Douglas talk show out of Philadelphia. That's Did right. they mention That's that? where he got his start, yeah. running, delivering sandwiches. <laughs> and then Nixon came on the show and was awful. And... Ailes pulled him aside and said, you need a media consultant. Wow. And Nixon said, I don't even know what a media consultant <laughs> is. Ailes said, I am. I've just invented the title. That's who I am. So he's wow. the one who invented media consultant? Correct. He's the one who gave us Richard Nixon. Because the story goes that Richard Nixon, when he first went on TV against Kennedy, yes. was sweaty and looked 
sullen and you're sinister. You're a little sweaty today, but <laughs> you're still lovable. Engage. But once Roger Ailes got his hand on him, he smiled and he invented this thing called the, um, I think it was the arena or the podium or the platform. Anyway, long story short, Nixon would come out and stand on a slightly raised circle surrounded by people who would ask questions. So it would be like a, a people's town debate. Hall. Warmed ask it up. me anything. Yeah. And Nixon, you know, that's how Nixon got elected. You know, Roger Ailes, disgusting human being, uh, called in this documentary, I think, falsely by some people, a genius and a visionary. He was the one who, he actually had a, a network called, I think it was called America's Talking. And it was a talk show network that NBC owned. And he did it, it was his idea and he launched it and yeah. he even had his own show on it. And kind of vaguely along that. came Bill Gates once... America's Talking reached, I think it's called Talk America or something like that. Anyway, it's all talk shows. Yeah. Once it reached a certain threshold of subscribers, of viewers, NBC said, shit, this is worth some money. Enter Bill Gates with his checkbook. They turned it into, reskinned it as MSNBC. Now, as we know, NBC isn't always the best with its talent and it creates these sort of, just seems to mismanage them and upset them. Yeah. You know, just time and time again. Roger Ailes was so angry, he was like, I am going to fuck them like they've never been fucked in all their lives. And I suppose, thanks to them, we have, we Fox, have News. Fox, Fox News. News. Wow. And the story then goes on to reveal the Boise culture of Fox News, the basic normalization of sexual assault, and how you it was all about pretty bodies and pretty women, and they had to put out for their bosses, not just Roger Ailes, but also Bill O'Reilly. And disgusting. it is Ugh. a disgusting, sleazy story. And of course, at one point, I think, uh, interesting guy, actually, Glenn Beck, uh, conservative commentator, yep. who I think walked away from it all and sort of had a sight. Um, what's that word? You know, St. Peter or... Like a, a kicking against the pricks, so a vision, a revelation. Yes, to get out. An okay. epiphany. Thank you. Ding, ding, ding. Nice. He had an epiphany. And he, <laughs> he, um, he said to one point to Roger Ailes, why don't you just, you know, you got enough money. Why don't you just you know, go away? But um, Roger Ailes said, I still have one more president to pick. Dum, dum, dum. I was going to say. You know who that fucker is. Isn't it weird that two, the two worst presidents in America we've ever had Two people were Roger Ailes yep. and Roger Stone. Yep. Two Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I will tell you that I, I think is interesting, Roger Ailes liked to tell a story about how when he was a young boy, he used to sleep on the top bunk and his that father a, came in. Is that a in. metaphor? <laughs> I know, that's what I was going to say. Seems <laughs> more like a bottom to me. Oh, sorry. His father came into no the room. No bottom shaming. Held out his arms and said, jump and I'll catch you. And the young Roger Ailes jumped and his father stepped back and let him fall on the floor. Yes, yes, yes. It's a great story. The Never story, trust anyone. Exactly. Exactly. A wicked, evil message, frankly. And you know what? It's not a true story. That mm -hmm. didn't happen. It's a literary trope. It's like it's like sort of bog standard, you know, here's a make you tough story. And I think, you know, with Trump and uh, Ailes, you have two birds of a feather, people who are paranoid, convinced the world is out to get them, and whose basically philosophy is, you know, if someone does you wrong, or even if they don't, just hit them, you know? Yeah. The, there's, the, there's a state of war, and strike there's always first. an enemy, strike first. Yeah. Can I ask you an embarrassing question? Mm. Is Roger Ailes still alive? He's still with us? He no. is not still alive, Ugh. because... That's why we said ding dong. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> here's what happened. So... He was accused, finally, after years and years and years yes. of sexual abuse. Gretchen of sexual Carlson. Yes. Yes, Miss and, America. Um, was forced out by the Murdochs. And once he was out, he really had no reason to live. Once evil and doesn't have an evil mission, evil dies. He, like, had a heart attack or and something. And he fell over in his apartment, in his place in Florida. Here's an interesting twist. He hated women. Hated women. He was a hemophiliac, so he could never serve in war. So he he kind of weaponized his whole life, and he said you can only get hemophilia from a woman, from the mother. So he always sort of hated and resented um, women and his mother, and he treated them very badly, and he's the most awful man. What a dumbass. Mm-hmm. Rest in perfection. Yeah, deuces, bitch. Oh, you know who else is? <laughs> he's also responsible for Mitch McConnell's career. Well... 
as well. I have to say, I did enjoy the Mike Douglas show growing up, so I'm going to give him that. <laughs> Look in the sunny side. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so uh, that's Divide and Conquer, story of Roger Ailes. It's available on Amazon Prime. Do you have Amazon Prime? I do. Yeah. I think I'm, it's quite good. Yeah. I never can figure out how to work it. You just go to the Prime video bit. <laughs> it seems Quick. like, but the, all the Amazon things like Audible, do you use Audible? I, I started it's so using hard. Audible because it's another subscription. Right. And you get free credits. Right. But I never listen to the books. I know. I know. Okay. Get your wow goodies here at Wow Headquarters on Hollywood Boulevard. That's where we're broadcasting to you from. Right over there. Next to RuPaul's Star, which is out on the boulevard. They're taking a picture of it right now. You can listen to us anytime on the WOW app or watch us on the WOW Report. Um, Sirius XM app. Uh -huh. Exactly. Um, when, can I ask you guys a, a favor? I'd love it. Would you get the hell off the stage? Because I have some <laughs> guests coming in for number one. Okay. You'll be behind the camera. We have very special, extra special number one that includes, I'm going to blow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, no, Monique Hart. Peppermint, superstars from RuPaul's Drag Race, and John Pauly. We have a very special segment. Why were we not teasing this? This is why we're not like big broadcasting honchos, right? We should right. have been teasing this from the very beginning. The very we start. Can, we can throw in some more okay. teases. Yeah. Well, I was going to say when we come back, but you won't Tom, be coming it's back. When you come back. Yeah. Yes. I'm just going to touch up my makeup and get ready to go. Huh? <laughs> Listen to the Wow Pod on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. Break a leg. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. So welcome back to the Wow Report. Um, uh, I'm Fenton. I'm, I've become the millennial producer for this, for this <laughs> last segment. Because we've been counting down the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. And we have reached the number one spot. Number one. Our number one is so big, we had to move Blake and Fenton away from the table for those of you watching. Disinvited. <laughs> I'm here with drag race historian. Thank you. And producer, John Polly. Yes. And we both, and all of us, are graced with the queendom of Peppermint, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. <gasps> and Monique Hart's brown cow stunning. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> We're so glad you're here. Yes. Thank you. Um, you had been here for the whole radio cast, but you were downstairs doing a little thing called the RuPaul's Drag Race official podcast hosted by... By, by me. John Polly. <laughs> yes. By these lovelies this week. <laughs> it's in the can, right? It's in the can, yes. You can't yes. talk yes. about it. Yes. But you can tell yes. us what it is, right? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a podcast where we go, we, we, we are, we're going through season 11, we're watching every episode, we're discussing it, and we're talking with queens who have lived, who have, who have made history, who have lived the experience, who share their experience of what it's like to, to, you know, to do a mini challenge, to do, to, to do the runway, to get, to get eliminated, to, to, to win, to um, be an untucked, all those things. So they're they're giving us the inside tea on what it's like, and like you know, it's it's, it's like oh, I was in a I was in a musical, it was crazy, or like you know, I did a, 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 a yes that. <laughs> now, now, John Paul, are you the host? Are you actually on the no, podcast? No, not anymore. Now also, John <laughs> has produced the show, uh, helped produce the show since season five, four, five, five, five yeah, which feels like yesterday. John, you're there, yeah. And and um, John has the most puns per second of anyone in the world but and has been doing RuPaul's recap. How do you? Uh, I, yeah, I've been doing recaps since season two. Right. Which are on YouTube, yeah. which you can watch. Yeah. But yeah. you're so fucking greedy. You're like, give me a podcast. I know. I may not know the lyrics to greedy, but I'm still greedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like to keep greedy. it on? I would <laughs> like to keep it on, please. But, and we're so happy. And, and, and you have queens on every week, fabulous queens. Yes. And I just want to say hello to them and thank you for coming. We love you. You're part of the family. Yes. Peppermint, the last time I saw you, you were... Starring on Broadway, mm -hmm. that was head, such over a good joke. head over heels, the Go Go's musical. Yes, yeah. Did that change your life? Say yes. Life <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me um, about it. No, and it absolutely did. It, it it was. It came from out of nowhere. Um, I, I had the opportunity. A few quit. Whoa. A few quit. That, like that braid came from out of nowhere. A, break, yeah. um, <laughs> a few queens I know auditioned for it, but I ended up booking it. And it was a musical uh, about, uh, it was a fantasy musical uh, about a family on the run, kings and queens and princesses, and it was set to the music of the Go-Go's. And, and it was I wonderful. I can tell you, it's the oddest combination it of It is, because pieces. it's based on Sydney's Arcadia, which was written in 1590-something. Yeah. Like, I tried to read the original text, and I'm like, I, I can't. Mean, 
I had to read it at college. It was required yeah. reading. And it's hard going. And I, I much preferred your version. And I see a lot of Broadway shows, and it maybe was my favorite of this past year. Oh, thank you. I yes. loved it. It was such a it was a the surprise in the best way because it, it made me feel, and there was all kinds of feels. You know, I'm such a cornball. Whenever like gay people or non gender specific people get together and kiss, and I'm like, I'm like, I never see yeah, it. Yeah, you never <laughs> see it. Yeah. We had we had lesbian kisses. We had it yes. was so gender aware. It was. Bo- a body positive, you know, the the, the beautiful princess in the land was oh. a huge buxom woman who sang the house down. And so we had a lot of firsts. And my character was the I think the first ever non-binary character in in Broadway, at least yeah. Her that we know. Do you know it's interesting that, right? But and even like, <laughs> 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 yes, why have I thought of that? It's even yes. five hundred years oh, ago, yeah. they were like having these shenanigans of like you know mistaken identity and men yeah, just as very, boys all those and girls. Yeah. Yes, they were mm-hmm. like up to the same old tricks. Yeah, yeah. and so it was neat to be a part of that and at such a um, uh, poignant moment and um, and it so it was it was life changing in many ways. Yeah. I love it. And like little kids in high schools will be playing character based They on are. Stuff. They already are. Created. They've already got the rights to, the, they've re- released the rights now since it's, the Broadway run is officially over. Yep. And so now the first production of it uh, regionally is going to be in Atlanta. Oh. And I, I think I may go down to Atlanta mm. and, and check it. I got to meet the person right. who will be playing the role that I originated. I love it. And um, now yeah. I just went to Peppermint first, Monique, because of a season order. Because uh, I am dying to talk to you, Monique no. Hart. And I want to thank you on behalf of everyone here at World of Wonder and around the world for making All Stars 4 one of the best seasons ever and who had so much to do so with are that. we nominated for an Emmy? I, well, we, we should be. I got an <laughs> Emmy we for will. 10. So I <laughs> yes! yes! Double Emmy. Emmy. Double Emmy. <laughs> Double Emmy. <laughs> Boom. Very good. Um, Please. What's happening? I, now I know you know Winchman, I guess it's important, I guess, to find people that want to compete and want to win. But I have to say, as a fan and a producer, mm-hmm. I don't I, like. I just love it. I love the show. I love how hard everyone tries. And I think victory, depending on a different day, you know what I'm saying. I think it's always so close, and it's performance, yeah. and it's it's putting you guys on the line in the most sort of uncomfortable way. And when you come through, it's great. When you don't, I love you more. So, like, how did how was this the All Star season for you? Uh great. I'm ah, lost with the oh, question. Oh, oh. Let's hear that again. What was the question? Well, that's fair. Yeah. How did? How was? It, I know you didn't win, but how was All Star? The fair? whole experience as a whole. Yeah. Um. Or what, what are your feelings now? I mean, you're a producer, so I really can't say what I really you want. Well, actually, I can please because do, you know do. the scores are the scores. So please do. Uh, <laughs> no, bring it on. No, it was actually a really great experience. <laughs> I'm Damn really it. honored. You know. No, seriously. Uh, first of all, to get a call back, right? Uh, right away. To get a call. You back. First of all, to get a call yes. and then to get a call back. Thank you for the blessing. Uh, secondly, I thought I knew what the game was and then y'all kind of flipped it up on us. I love it. But it was really great to go back and to win and to really kind of show forth my talents. Like, talent was never my showed. issue on season 10. No. You know, it was money. And I would say, you know, Drag Race early seasons, you probably didn't need money. And to do drag, you don't need money. But I would say to compete on an international competition, That's fair. you need coins because right. it uh, visually, we really don't care what you say. Like, thank God I was funny and I'm cute. But, you know, <laughs> really we cute. know yeah. Miss Aquaria not from what she said, but from what she wore. Does she talk? <gasps> <laughs> so, um, very that too. So, but I'm blessed overall. I mean, you know, to come out not winning is is winning and to be the Shangela. Of this season. Oh. <laughs> Bitch, we saw where she ended up. Okay, thank you. It's weird because it's a competition. Oh, it. <laughs> it's a competition and we want you guys to win. But mm. I have two words. Now, y'all had a gag with this one. What? Because this tie. Now, if you really want to go all the I, way I'll in. I'll go there with you. Okay, well, standing. Well, uh, okay, because I hold no bars back. So, um, mm. the tie. I asked you guys. I asked. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was interesting to say the least uh well one it was such a hard tie for the fact that if anybody was going to be tied um it should have been me and trinity and i just will say (laughs) that anyway Uh Uh, people that watched the show said the same thing okay Um, (laughs) everyone now however my sister monet exchange peed right so she got that top two spot stunning i feel that she was crowned and trinity was crowned because we needed a black queen 
but we just got. But I don't know. It's not shows and shenanigans. It was just very, very bad. It's a very uh, sophisticated well, mathematical tune in on this equation. One. Okay, mm-hmm. can you explain it? It came out as a tie. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Trinity was one ahead by the end, and I thought that maybe in Monet pulled ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With her numbers, you know, and, I, and it's it's a gag. There's two. They both got paid equally, so I felt good yes, about that. Exactly. That was the other yeah. thing that really hurt my feelings. Right. Like, wait a minute, bitch. <laughs> but can I just have to? If you, anybody you, needed the money, she already had fifteen. I needed at least another five. That's that's fair. And by the <laughs> way, we're doing a we're doing a, a GoFundMe page right now. Yeah. Right. Right. And can I just give you two words of encouragement? Yeah. Jennifer Hudson. Oh. Did she win American Idol? Oh no, she did I not. Was to say I didn't loud win. Like her. I, I had the yes. same exact <laughs> moment on my season. You know, Wait, I had the same now? exact moment on my season. I was pr- definitely n- next to be eliminated just because of the record mm. when we got down from five to four, and I was like, I'm probably gonna go home. I rallied, and I don't know, but I would like to think that my performance in that in that last challenge, going from five to going from four to three is what saved me uh-huh. and made us have a top four, which I don't think they were planning on doing because, you know, I don't think they were planning on doing it. We have trouble counting yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Math, math seems to, to be hard yeah. around here. Hard. Just from math nine, hard. ten. We're more of your arts yeah. kind of students I than your math kind of students. Yes. But you know this what is saying? what I will say. Yes. Being an all-star and seeing the two that did win, yeah. I would say that you got the right two. If it ain't me, you got the right two. Uh, that's I'm that cast? Oh, bitch. I will tell you, because I watch it sort of incognito like anyone cares who I am, but at a bar in Los Angeles, and people are so into it. So they into are. it. And they're, they're always <laughs> split, aren't they? They are split. Always really and split. I would have to say the all-star ending, I think, and I'm not, I'm not taking it away from you, but any four of you could have won and the crowd would have gone wild. Very bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Very that, bad. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's important. I just to wanted hundred thousand dollars too. And when I was like, wait, so she me. won Go and me. she Go got a hundred thousand. <laughs> that was the part I was like, oh, so, you know, lunch is on Monet exchange. Everybody lunch is on Monet exchange. She got it. <laughs> Maybe next time Monet, we help with something like Monet will win, but you'll get the money. Oh, Jesus is rich. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, you're going to be like, oh, that's a big, a five-way tie, five-way tie. It's a very millennial way of dealing with it. Everybody wins. Yes. Why does that happen on 12? <laughs> Season 12 is going to happen. My only regret is that it's a competition show because why we really do it is just to give you guys a showcase yeah. and yeah. to love you oh, and to amazing. give you, I hope, a boost internationally, whatever. Not to overstate what we do, but like, who would have thunk? Who would have thunk that this little blurry show on, on Logo has <laughs> changed the world? Yeah, Season you. 11. Do you know what is beautiful to me? I think, like, drag race. People think, oh, I just want to get on the show. Bitch, that is work. Okay? It is real work. (laughs) But then after you leave and all of the tears and everything is said and done to be on a subway. You live in New York when I was visiting New York, same with Desi, or just to be on the street. And then here specifically from moms, but women of color, predominantly in the black community, it is not accepted just across the board. And you can see that generally in any continent. Yeah. Uh, or any country and so to have black mothers and some black fathers go hey I respect you I see what mm-hmm. you do that like mm-hmm. shifts something deep with inside of me that would not happen Thank had God. you not been on the show had, had we you not watched? been on the show but had the show not even been mm-hmm. what it is like it is really opening up people's eyes to it's a cultural juggernaut that you show the duality of the character that is presented and then the person not just because mm-hmm. you were trans on the show so just but the person yeah. behind the makeup it just it's so educational people's. it's so eye opening it is and everyone's so individual you know Very, the, yeah. everyone has their own story what is there an aha moment for you? Is there is there is there one story having been on the show that you dealt with a fan or somebody or this moment that's like come to you that's just sort of changed? Yeah, some I mean it's so interesting how um, you know we think of drag as a specific thing. If you define it, it's a very specific thing. And I think through the lens of Drag Race, it's allowed. Not only has Drag Race introduced drag as we know it to people in other countries, other families, people, uh, types of folks. But we've also been able to really share the art of drag. I think people are really accepting it and drinking it all in. Mm -hmm. I see more trans queens. I see more non-binary. I see more, you know, people who are AFAB queens, bio queens, um, you know, who, who they, they want to emulate the queens that are on the show Mm -hmm. and, and they, uh, they 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 want to participate in 
the art of drag because they are fans of Drag Race. And I think it's some it's just driving home something that we always knew mm -hmm. is that everyone loves drag. Yeah. Everyone loves mm -hmm. drag and everyone wants to participate mm -hmm. in it in some way, whether they're a spectator or having a chance to put on that eyeshadow Very for the bad. first time. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, there's so going to be doing meet and greets all around the world. I meet so many trans folk, trans men and trans women who were like, I didn't think that I would be accepted not only in my transness, but also in the gay bar as a drag king or a drag queen, whatever their whatever their talent and art is. And they and that really um it's it's great. It's amazing. Thank Guys, you. We are right Thank time. you. So I have to say thank you for coming. Please tune in to uh, you know, where, where like do you get the, where you get the podcast? <laughs> um, DragRacePodcast.com. Also on Spotify, on, on, on Apple Places Music. Places where all Wherever you get. Wherever you get. Wherever you get. Where do you go? The same place you've been where? listening to your music and watching your shows. Exactly. That's exactly. David you. And also I have to say you have to come. Wait, wait. <laughs> what? You have to come to DragCon. Yes, which is coming absolutely. Up, right? You guys DragCon? You better believe uh, I probably will. Sure. <laughs> We're trying to work on creating that whole gooped thing from Nickelodeon <laughs> and making it real. I like it. for the budget. Because it's happening in LA May 24th, 25th, 26th, 26th. and it wouldn't be the same without you. So we're mm -hmm. always invited. Are you coming? You're part of the family. Oh, I'll be there. You came yes. to my booth. I think he came to my booth last time too. Mm -hmm. I did. Your booth. That's yes. where you're going to get that $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling you, darling. They're telling you, darling. They're telling you, darling. Thank you, Molly yes. Hart. Thank you, John Polly. Thank, Thank you, Peppermint. Yeah. Um, this is Tom Campbell on behalf of, uh, of well, James, who's away, of yes. Fenton, who's here, of Blake, who filled in. Everybody, Yes. until next time, go out and do something that makes the world go, wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bye.